Hello, my name is Matthew Pace. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how we can go about setting up the simulations in the 3D Experience platform, leveraging model-based technology. What you see here is a single part that has a single representation at the moment. That representation is called a 3D shape, and that's where our design geometry goes. You can see that our design has been modeled with solid geometry. For simulation purposes, we would prefer to have surface geometry in an associated shell mesh. So our first step is going to be to create that surface geometry. We don't want to directly modify the design geometry. We want to maintain the integrity of that, that feature. And so what we're going to do is insert a new representation under the part where we can create our mid-surface geometry. To do that, I'm just going to right click, say insert and abstraction shape. So now we're going to copy the part body from the design and paste it into our abstraction, creating a copy paste with link. This will allow any design changes to propagate into our abstraction shape in the future. At this point, I'm going to hide our design shape. You can see that there are a variety of different uh, fillets, holes, things of that sort on our, our part. We may not want to include all of those in our simulation. So if I go over to the defeature section of the action bar in the simulation model prep app, I can use the defeaturing command to choose which features I would like to remove. For example, we could remove all the fillets that are within some particular uh, range of values. Let's start with 10 millimeters, and let's kind of preview that to see how it looks. It looks good. We've left in one of the large fillets that's kind of over by this cutout. And so I can just say OK. And now we've gone ahead and we have started simplifying our geometry. We could have also removed the holes, but I've decided to leave those in our, our model for the time being. At this point, we're going to go ahead, create a geometrical set. And now we're going to idealize the solid as a mid-surface. There's various options for the mid-surfacing command. In this case, we're going to use automatic. Simply pick the solid and say OK. At this point, I'm going to hide the solid, and what you see here is a, the mid-surface that has been created. Go ahead and look at some different uh, options, such as the surface connection checker, and maybe look at the boundaries. And just make sure that we do have everything kind of modeled as intended, and it looks like we indeed do. So one final step that we're going to take before we generate our mesh, we're going to go over to the uh, idealize section of the action bar. We're going to create a, a trim with pieces on that mid-surface. So this is simply an operation that helps us have a higher quality mesh later. So uh, we would like to have that. If I go down to the advanced parameters, we're going to go ahead and keep all pieces, turn off, check connexity, check manifold, and say OK. We can ignore the warnings. They are really uh, irrelevant for what we're doing here. So now we've gone ahead and we've set up our abstraction. The last step is going to be to go ahead and create our finite element model. So similar to before, I'm going to insert a finite element model into our, our part. And I'm just going to double click on properties in the tree to transition from one app to a different app. When I do that, I'm asked to select the contributing shapes. So which geometry do I want to include in the simulation? In this case, we can choose to include the abstraction shape. So now we're in model, we're going to move over to mesh, create a mesh on our part. So I'm just going to go ahead and press mesh here and see if the default mesh size looks pretty good. And it does look pretty good. Uh, one thing that you'll notice is there's a lot of small elements being created around these holes that we, we did not remove from a geometry perspective. And so instead of actually modifying the geometry, can I also choose to remove holes directly from the measure. And again, we have a, a range of values that we can specify so that we can you know, ignore the small holes but retain the larger hole. We could add an additional rule here to add certain number of, of layers of elements around larger holes. 
and generate a new mesh. So now we have a, a nice ring around this particular region. So now we've generated a mesh. The last thing we need to do is actually define the thicknesses for all the elements. We can do that with a shell section. And we're going to select our, our source geometry. And then the thickness definition is going to come from solid. When we do this, it, it automatically is going to do a mapping operation from our, our solid geometry onto our surface geometry so we have all the th appropriate thicknesses. At this point, we can go ahead and do a quick check just to make sure everything is uh, looking good in our fine element model. And at this point, we've really gone ahead and we've set up our, our model. In the next uh, video in the session here, we're going to see how we can go about setting up an actual simulation and then doing a design change and seeing all the data propagate through.